A Wall Street giant, Citigroup, is undergoing a restructure that aims to slim down the 240,000-strong organization. It'll mean fewer layers of management and a refocus of city's business units. In an exclusive interview with CNA's Don Tan, Chief Executive Jane Fraser discussed leadership at City in this time of change. I want to remind you of something you said about leadership in an interview that you did with... Um, the Harvard Business School Club of New York. This was in 2016. In answer to the question, where does courage come in when you're trying to affect change? Mm -hmm. You might remember you said that it takes brutal honesty and authenticity. Mm -hmm. So brutal honesty, let's talk about that because it often gets a tough rap. People don't like to necessarily hear it, but it does cut down on some of the dilly-dallying perhaps when you get to it. As leader of city, though, you want to impart that brutal honesty. Are you prepared for the brutal feedback as well? Oh, absolutely. One of the pieces of advice I was given when I became CEO is have big ears and thick skin. And that goes directly to answer your question. You learn how to exercise those muscles. I strongly believe in excellence and empathy. And empathy to me is the big ears. It's listening. It's putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. And if I was in their shoes, how would I want to hear bad news or good news or other pieces? And I think that becomes a competitive edge. But as a leader, I have to be decisive. I have to be bold. We have clarity of vision. We're looking at a firm with tremendous potential. So it's the passion and energy and that belief that comes from it. But you have to be completely honest about and dispassionate. Where are we? What's working? What's not working? If you've made a bad decision on something, there's another decision. And, you know, own it. At Citigroup, you've probably got lots of baby boomers yeah. who... Maybe, maybe they, they may continue to, to stay. They may be on, on their way out in terms of retirement and so on. You've also got lots of Gen Zs or Gen Zs. They are the future of banking. They are doing things differently. We, we keep getting told this. Mm -hmm. How are you sort of incorporating your view of this younger generation and, and what they will mean as Citigroup goes forward? I have a 21 and 23 year old who make sure I'm very grounded, um, that they've got plenty of commentary and it helps you understand a little bit more through their friends and others. Uh, you're very connected in to and with our own people as well as to you know, what, what matters to them. So listening carefully, understanding it, learning when to get out of the way. And I do think leadership has changed. Leadership used to be about telling people what to do and then it, and making sure they did it. Whereas now in a world where data is everywhere, you're usually not the best person to take the decision. It's deeper in the organization where they've got far more of the data and the information. So as a leader, you set context now. Um, you set the context for the organization from the culture, from the tone, from the values, and then the broader strategy. And then you get out the way and make sure that, uh, that that next generation, that they're able to grow, learn, lead, engage with the clients and the customers. We talked a little bit earlier about the possibility of a recession and, mm. and uh, I mean, banks as well as other, in other sectors, they'll be thinking about their spend in this mm. higher than, you know, longer interest rate scenario. You have to spend on tech and all of the, to get the advantages that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. What's Citigroup's position with that? We've been investing heavily. We will continue to invest heavily. So if we think of our transaction services network, which is uh, you know, a, critical, a critical asset and capability we have here in Asia, we've been investing in a lot of the cutting edge capabilities with a market leader. We've been known for that. So that investment just continues apace. 
um, similarly investments in AI, where I think we see the advantages coming first, is going to be in, to, in productivity and coding. We're seeing it first in customer service, and then we're seeing it in the coding productivity. I'm sure we're going to find thousands of new use cases. We're trying quite a few of them. Um, but that will enable us to also do more with the investment dollars. So I don't, certainly for us, I don't see us slowing down our investment spend at all. We're just going to be able to do more with it. That's kind of exciting. And we will have more on CNA's exclusive interview with C Citigroup CEO Jane Fraser throughout the day. And you can also log on to our website, cna.asia, for the story.